for the sake of national pride. Today, racing has become big business, a multi-million dollar industry. And although the vast majority of those involved in the sport are honest, the lure of riches has attracted a less desirable element as well. Those not adverse to employing chicanery and worse. Judge, you carry insurance on this place, don't you? Well, what does my insurance have to do with anything? Not only are we going to get away with slipping in that ringer this afternoon, but you're going to come out of this with enough money to buy yourself a new ranch. What do you have in mind, Skeeter? Tonight we're going to torch the barn with proud chief's lookalike in it. Our mystery drama, Barn Burner, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Steve Lerman and stars Russell Horton and Patricia Elliott. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Owners of thoroughbred horses share a common dream. To someday possess a horse with the speed, stamina, and spirit that will qualify the animal as a true champion. Owner Jed Tracy, his wife Jody, and trainer Skeeter Winslow worked diligently to develop a horse named Proud Chief into an outstanding runner with unlimited potential. Their dream appeared to be on the verge of becoming reality. But moments ago, Proud Chief competed in his most recent race, and the trio is now facing a rude awakening. And those are the official results of the fourth race, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe what I just saw. Proud Chief finished seventh and last. This is his worst race yet, Ted. He was hardly able to keep up. Uh, his last three races have been disappointing. Disappointing? I call it a disaster. Jed, I've been training horses for over 20 years. We just ran smack dab into a wall of the worst racing luck possible. That's the only way to look at it. If only Proud Chief hadn't broken that bone in his hoof. Well, race horses do come back from that type of injury, Jody. More often than not. Proud Chief hasn't been able to, obviously. Well, I- I'm very upset. Jed, would you mind terribly if I took the car and drove back to the ranch now? Uh, go ahead, Jody. Uh, Skeeter and I will see the Proud Chief. We'll be along in the van in a couple of hours. I'll have dinner waiting. I'll see you later. Oh, hurts me to see Jody so sad. She had such high hopes for Proud Chief. Well, what are your plans for the horse now, Jed? Huh? Yeah, I'm not sending Proud Chief back on the track, Skeeter. We can still turn a profit on Proud Chief. A real handsome profit. <laughs> what do you want to do? Take Proud Chief out to the park on Sundays and sell pony one? <laughs> My idea is a little more ambitious than that. We can still send Proud Chief out on that racetrack and come back big winners. All right, all right. Come on, now settle down, fella. I know you're not too fond of being bathed. It's only take a couple of minutes now. Uh, come on, Skeeter, what's this plan of yours? Well, the first thing I have to do is get on the phone to these friends of mine who do the, uh... They're racing out in Western Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are they going to tell you? If they happen to have any big geldings, about 16 hands high, racing up there. Dear, yeah. I hope you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. And uh, what might that be, huh? You're looking for a ringer. Ted, we find a horse can pass a proud chief's twin. Except for the fact that this other proud chief can run fast enough to win races. We'll be setting ourselves up for some tidy profit. Skeeter, you've got to be crazy even to think of trying to pull such a stunt. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I never heard you say anything about this. All we have to do is send the ringer on a track once. Just once. The way 
slope poke here has been racing lately. His odds are going to be sky high. We lay more than a few bucks on the doubles now. You understand? He crosses that finish line first. We may have one way to the bank. How are we going to spend all this money in jail, Skeeter? My little scheme is going to buy us a one-way ticket to Easy Street, not the Slammer. You really think it will be that easy to pull the switch? Cloud Chief doesn't have any unusual markings. Finding a stand-in form is going to be simple. That's all. Well, what about the lip tattoo? It's no problem. I know this guy who runs a tattoo parlor. He's a real artist. When the panic judge looks over Cloud Chief number two, he won't be able to tell the difference. Hmm. What about, uh, Jody? What about her? Well, no matter how perfect a match you make, even with a lip tattoo, every horse has its own personality. Jody will know that something isn't right. I've got that all worked out, too. Really? The real town chief can stay at your ranch. What we do is stable our, uh, Canadian import at the deserted Harris Ranch. You got me? On race days, we take the real thing up there... We give him a change of scenery while his twin is at the track making us a pile of dough. After the race, we take the ringer back to the empty stable and put Proud Chief in his home sweet home. It's your place. Uh, I just can't see my way clear to do this. Jed, how much have you picked up in the way of purse money since the first of the year? You had all your hopes pinned on Proud Chief making it to the derby. You spent an awful lot of money getting that animal back to the race. Mm -hmm. For all the good it did me. Word on a grapevine has it that you're next to broke. We've both been living on dreams for a long time now, Jed. I finally have a way to make those dreams come true. (sighs) One race, Skeeter. How's that? Are you saying you're in, Jed? I'll make the switch once. After that, you send the ringer back to where he came from, and we forget this whole thing ever happened. When was the horse brought in? Last night, late. Mm -hmm. Did no one saw the van pull in? Chad, this broken down old ranch is so far off the beaten path. Come on, let's see the horse. Uh, Might as well. I'd put him in a stall, but I don't think he's too happy being all cooped up. I'll leave him in the corral as much as possible. There he is, Jed. Meet Brown Chief the <laughs> second. <laughs> How do you like him? Fine. There sure is a resemblance. He's a dead ringer for the real one. A live ringer is more like it. This one is real speedy. Hmm. Well, what about the lip tattoo? All taken care of. Here, have a look. Hmm. The numbers are identical. <laughs> you got to hand it to you, Skeeter. You really pulled it off. I told you I had all the angles covered. Mm, what happens now? You and me and our four-legged friend are off to the races. Jed, how come Jody's not here? She always comes out to see Proud Chief Ron. Proud Chief isn't racing today, remember? Uh, you didn't come at the game. No, no. Considering the way the real Proud Chief's been going lately, Jody didn't think it'd be any fun coming out to see him get beat. Well, if she was here, she'd be in for a pleasant surprise. I hope you're right. All my available cash is bet on this horse. The wisest investment you'll ever make. Look at the odds for it. Those numbers are a sight to saw right, eh? Considering Proud Chief's last three miserable performances, 35 to 1 is about right. Don't be long now, Jed. You got those betting tickets right in my pocket. The flag is up. Easy Street, here we come. And they're off. As the horses break down on the final turn and begin the best run for the finish, Mark Horn has a commanding three leg lead with a tired Cuba boy. Here he comes. <laughs> yeah. Now it's Cloud Chief and Rumrunner of the second. Cloud Chief goes by Rumrunner, takes dead aim at Bullhorn for the lead. It's Bullhorn by a lead. But here comes Cloud Chief. Bullhorn's lead is down a length of back to back. And they hit the wire. It's Cloud Chief by a nose. Cloud Chief is your next round. We did it when it came, Jim. Little bag all the way. Oh, I'm glad that. 
that's over, Skeeter. Uh, I'll go to the cashier's window. You take the horse back to the paddock. Here you go, boy. The way you ran, you deserve a treat. Have a couple of lumps of sugar on old Skeeter. <laughs> Hey, Jed, is this a race horse or is this a race horse? Yeah, let's get the groom to bathe him and uh, do up his legs. You know, we're going to have to run him in a higher class the next time out. Skeeter, uh, we, we had a deal. One race, and that was going to be it, right? We got a good thing going ahead, Jed. Hey, excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, uh, Doc Johnson, hello. Congratulations on winning that last race. Proud chief looked very impressive. Well, we're real happy about the way things turned out. Considering the way Proud Chief's been running of late, I could have sworn a different horse was out there on the track today. Uh, Doc, uh, are you here as a friend or as a veterinarian for the racing association? No, both capacities apply, I suppose. Your horse's reversal of form puzzles me greatly. Uh, horses can be unpredictable animals, you know that, Doc. Hmm. I want to talk to you about that last race in my office. Right now. Close the door, Skeeter. I'd like this chat to be private. What's on your mind, Doc? How did you do it, Skeeter? What are you talking about? Do what? Proud Chief's performance was extraordinary. Make some sense of it for me. I really don't have anything to tell you, Doc. Come on, Skeeter. Proud chief breaks his coffin bone and goes to the sidelines to recuperate. Well, that's standard procedure. When he comes back to the races, he runs like he ought to be pulling a milk wagon. That happens that way sometimes, Doc. That horse today raced like he's ready to win the Triple Crown. You did more than say a few magic words to make him run that fast. Just what is it you think I did, Doc? I know you told me. Now, wait a minute. Are you implying that Skeeter might have done something illegal, Doc Townsend? No, no, no. Be so touchy. You latched on to some new training method, obviously. One that did proud chief a world of good. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you want to be let in on the secret, Doc. <laughs> is that what this is all about? <laughs> if you've come up with a way to do near miracles, you owe all the racing to tell me. I'm thinking that this might make a very interesting article for the journal my veterinary association publishes. You wouldn't mind if I wrote it up for them, would you? Is that uh, really necessary? Why would you object? Well, help you out, Doc, gladly. Fine. First thing I'm going to need is some pictures. X-rays of that hoof. Well, what for? To make a comparison. I have photos of the broken hoof taken when it first happened. I need to see it now to show how the bone is healed. Hey, Doc, is that necessary? That's essential. Proud Chief's in the barn area now. Walk him over. I'll take the x-ray and we'll do the interview. We'll take long. No, no. T uh, today's out of the question. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem? Well, Proud Chief just had a very tough race. I, I want to get him back to the ranch and bed him down in the stall so he can rest. It's a part of this new training program we have, Doc. You understand. Well... The deadline for articles for the next issue is next week. Bring the horse by tomorrow. We'll take care of it then. And I won't take no for an answer. How could you do it, Skeeter? Why in heaven's name did you agree to cooperate with that pompous Doc Townsend? What is going to happen when he sees that x-ray? Nothing's going to happen. Either the horse that ran today never had a broken bone in his hoof. When Doc Townsend takes a look at that x-ray, we are going to have a lot of explaining to do. That's all you're worried about? We're going to be exposed as frauds if there's no getting around it. Now listen to me, will you? When Townsend takes his picture tomorrow, he's going to see a horse that had a broken bone. All right? How? All we have to do is head up to the Harris Ranch. Swap the coat in the van for the real found chief. And take him to the van in the morning. Oh, Skeeter, this is becoming a lot more involved than I ever thought it could. Uh, I'll uh, pull up to the side of the barn here. You fetch Proud Chief from the corral while I put our mail ticket in one of the stalls, huh? Skeeter! Skeeter, you better come quick! 
What's the matter now, Jed? What's all the hollering about? You left Proud Chief out in the corral, right? Yeah. I figured he could use the exercise. Well, take a look over there. Oh. The corral's empty. Yeah. Where is Proud Chief? It must be very difficult to misplace a tongue of horse flesh. But apparently that's precisely what Jed and Skeeter have done. And it couldn't have happened at a more inoptimum time. One thing is certain. If Jed and Skeeter can't solve the mystery of the missing racehorse quickly, and Doc Townsend takes an X-ray of the bogus proud chief, more than the skeleton of a healthy horse will be exposed. But who knows? Perhaps the real proud chief will turn up again when we do, shortly, as our story continues in Act Two. Jed and Skeeter must be feeling very much like Shakespeare's Richard III. The beleaguered king found himself in such dire need of a horse that he was willing to exchange his entire kingdom for one. Our protagonists have far less to offer, but I'm sure they'd be willing to strike almost any bargain in order to reacquire proud chief. For the longer the thoroughbred remains at liberty, Jed and Skeeter's chances of retaining their freedom diminish considerably. Look at the top part of that railing. It's broken clean in the hand. Mm. Proud Chief must have jumped the fence. Now, why would he run off? Yeah, I think I know. Remember that thunderstorm he had a few hours ago? I came down like cats and dogs for about ten minutes. So what? Yeah, thunder and lightning always made Proud Chief a little loco. The storm must have spooked him to the point where he took off to try to get away from the noise and lightning. Oh, lighting. terrific, terrific. He could be anywhere by now. Huh? He's had plenty of time to travel, that's for sure. All right, what do we do now? Well, we look for him, Skeeter, and we better hope we find him. So there you are. I was about to call the chef. Don't you realize how late it is? I've been worried. Well, uh, you needn't have fretted, Jody. We're fine. It doesn't take all this time to do up a horse after he's raced. Where have you been? Well, uh, Skeeter and I got a little sidetracked. Well, I hope you're planning to perk up. Those long faces won't do at a celebration dinner. What are we celebrating? Well, one of the stable hands called and told me about Proud Chief winning. If that doesn't qualify as a special occasion, I don't know what would. Mm. Seeing Proud Chief get his nose up at the wire was quite a sight. I'm sorry you missed it. Now, you can tell me all about the race while we're eating. Wash up while I put the food on the table. I'll, I'll meet you in the dining room in five minutes. Not that I have much of an appetite. If we can't deliver the real proud chief to Doc Townsend by nine tomorrow morning... I can't figure out where that fool horse ran off to. We searched everywhere. We'll head out at daybreak and look some more. Maybe we'll get lucky. You should have realized we could never get away with it. Jed, we got a pile of money sitting in the glove compartment of that van outside. I'm not giving it back. Face it, Skeeter. There is no way out of this. Jed. Huh. You carry insurance on this place, don't you? Well, what does my insurance have to do with anything? Jed, not only are we going to get away with slipping that ringer in this afternoon, but you're going to come out of this with enough money to buy yourself a brand new ranch. What do you have in mind, Skeeter? The only way we can be accused of doing anything wrong is if there's incriminating evidence against us. Right? So? Tonight, we're going to torch the barn with Proud Chief's look-alike in it. I can't believe you're serious about this. It's bad enough I went along with committing fraud. I am not going to become party to arson. What are you talking about, arson? One of these kerosene lamps is going to fall over accidentally and set fire to the barn. You really think you were going to get away with this? I'm betting the next 20 years of my life on it, partner. Hey, what about the horse? You gonna murder him? It's his neck or ours. I can't let you do it. I am not gonna stand here and allow that animal to be executed. Now, look. I already gave in and put all the other horses out the pasture. There's only going to be one casualty. One is too many. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? I'm getting this gasoline so okay out of here. And you are not burning the barn, and you are not killing that horse. If I don't do this, we have no way of putting off that counter. That's the way it goes, I guess. I'm not going to jail. I'd rather confess than go around the rest of my life feeling like a murderer. It's only a horse. Skeeter, this has gotten way out of hand. 
Now, I am calling the sheriff. I, I am going to tell him everything. Jed, don't pick up that phone. Huh? You're going to stop me? If I have to, I will. I am going to make that call. I'm warning you, don't. Oh, put down that shovel, Skeeter. Uh, operator, get me to the sheriff's office. Skeeter, stay away from me. Skeeter! Hey! <laughs> You shouldn't have called my bluff. Now there's going to be two casualties. The horse and you. I wish I could have shared my good fortune with Jed. Then he might be here today, too. How's Jody taking what happened? The first day or two were real rough for her. She's in Chicago now, staying with relatives. I'll have to stop by when she gets back and pay my respects. Uh, only one horse is still unaccounted for, is that correct? Yeah, proud chief. Just when he was beginning to turn himself around and run like a real racehorse again. It really is a shame. Without those x-rays, I guess we'll never know for sure how come Proud Chief was able to run so fast. Take this, Skeeter. It's for you. What is this, Joey? Well, don't you recognize a check when you see one? Yeah, but what's it for? Ted did give you a small percentage of ownership in Proud Chief. That was your arrangement. I took a few points in exchange for reducing my training fee. You may not have present your share of this settlement. I feel kind of funny taking money from you, Jody. Well, it's your money, Skeeter. Take it, please. Okay. Thank you, Jody. That check doesn't exactly constitute a fortune. Do you have any idea what you'll do with it? There's only one thing I've ever done with the money I've managed to accumulate. You know that. Hmm. You're going to buy a race for us. There's a big auction in Kentucky over the weekend. Maybe I'll head down there and see if I can buy me a horse that will make visiting the winner's circle a habit. Good luck. Thank you, dear. I have an idea, though, Jody. Why don't you come with me? The horse you want to bid on should be coming up next, Peter. You think I'm making a wise choice, Jody? Oh, this horse, Indian warrior... His half-brother to proud chief. If Indian warrior has anywhere near the speed moxie his late brother had, I'll be buying myself a top-notch race horse. Oh, there's Indian warrior being led into the room now, Skeeter. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? The next horse, hip number 492. Nice chestnut coat by the name of Indian warrior. Now, I'm going to take an opening bid of $5,000 on this horse, but I'm sure y'all realize that's far below what he's worth. Do I hear $5,000 for Indian Warrior? Who bid $5,000? 5000 Oh, Mr. Winslow knows good horse flesh when he sees it. Now, who we'll make that six? I got 5000 looking for six. Five looking for six. 6000 Thank you, sir. Now, I got 6000 I'm looking for seven. Six, I want seven. Hey, this is a fine animal, folks. Who's going to give me $7,000? Seven. Okay, seven. Now, I need nine. Who's going to make it Nine. Nine thousand. Yeah, we're off the money. Nine thousand. I want ten. Nine. I want ten. Who's gonna give me ten? Let me hit ten now. Looks like the bidding is down to you and that man in the cowboy hat, Skeeter. And that man owns one of the biggest racing operations in the Southwest, Jody. He's got a much bigger bankroll than I have. I got seventeen thousand dollars for Indian Warrior, Mr. Winslow. Are you gonna let Mr. Marshall have that magnificent animal for that fifty price, or will you make it eighteen thousand? Eighteen thousand. Well, what do you say to that, Miss Marshall? 
Nineteen thousand. Twenty. That's as high as I can go, Jody. The bid is twenty thousand dollars. Twenty. I'd like to make it twenty-two. Will you do that for me, Mr. Marshall? Twenty to twenty-two. Twenty to twenty-two, perhaps. Look, Skeeter, that man Marshall turned his back. It appears that Marshall reached his limit just as I got to mine. Indian Warrior is going to be yours, Skeeter. Oh, it's be cold for twenty thousand dollars to Mister Skeeter Winslow. You got yourself quite a bargain there, Skeeter. Skeeter, you think Indian Warrior has a chance to win today? I've got real high hopes. His workouts have been nothing short of spectacular. It was thoughtful of the Racing Commission to run a race in Jed's honor. Well, Jed was one of the best liked and respected horse owners in this state. Naming this race the Jed Tracy Memorial Mile was the least they could do. It would be nice if your horse wins, Skeeter. And you and Jed were such good friends. And off! It's the money, Kelly Giant, and Indian Warrior all go for the lead. That is Pink Dorker, Booker Bay, Happy Henry, and Go Go Dead for the class. Will you look at that, Jody? Indian Warrior looks like he's going to beat this punch by a country mile. such a thing, Skeeter. More precisely, how could you do such a thing and actually expect to get away with it? I didn't do anything, Doc. you got to believe me. You know I check every horse's identifying marks before and after the race. The horse I saw in the paddock was Indian Warrior. But the animal that straggled in off the track most definitely was not. I'm as surprised by what happened out there as you are, Doc. How did you make the switch, Skeeter? I'd be interested to know. You're asking the wrong person. I don't know how it happened because I didn't make any switch. Really? Then who did? I was framed. I had to be. By whom? And why? All I know is I didn't do anything wrong. The racing commission has scheduled a hearing for 9 a.m. tomorrow. Unless you can come up with a plausible explanation by then... 
You're in big trouble, Skeeter. You're lucky these few stalls are still usable, Skeeter. The barn will be rebuilt soon enough. Could you break open another sack of oats? I'd like to finish feeding the horses. Yeah, sure. I hope you won't have too much trouble finding someone to help you out around here after I'm gone, Jody. Skeeter, you aren't thinking of running away or doing something foolish like that, are you? Oh, it sure crossed my mind. Whatever I tell that commission, they aren't going to believe me. You've gotten yourself into a bit of a fix. By this time tomorrow, my license to train's going to be revoked. And that's only if I'm lucky. I could wind up in jail. Jody, I swear on a stack of Bibles that I knew absolutely nothing about that ring of taking Indian warrior's place. Somehow, I don't think that's going to be enough to get you off. Well, you believe me, don't you? Hmm. As a matter of fact, I do. For the life of me, I cannot figure out how that switch was made. I have an idea about that, Skeeter. Would you care to hear my theory? Yeah, gladly. We were with Doc Townsend when he checked Indian Warrior's lip tattoo in the paddock before the race. So the substitution had to take place while the horse was en route to the track itself. Yeah, but where? Well, in that long, dark tunnel that runs from the paddock area out under the grandstand and out to the main track. You're saying that the real Indian Warrior walked into that tunnel, but the ringer walked out? Right. Well, how in the world would a switch like that be made without everyone in the tunnel knowing about it? Well, it would be difficult, but uh, not impossible. Seven race horses with jockeys on them rode in there, as well as seven lead ponies with outriders. You're telling me that 14 people didn't see a thing? Peter, everyone was riding from stark sunshine into a pitch black tunnel. It takes a few seconds for the eyes to adjust to that sudden loss of light. And the switch took place during that time? What if there was some sort of disturbance? Uh, a horse became unruly, for instance. Well, that type of diversion would make it relatively simple for a jockey to dismount from one horse and get on another without anyone being the wiser. Well, where would the extra horse come from? There wouldn't be any extra horse. Not if one of the horses ridden by an outrider were a thoroughbred. The ringer uh, could have been wearing a saddle cloth with the number four on it. Under the saddle blanket? Hey, Jody, that's a mighty complicated scenario to come up with off the top of your head. There was no speculation involved. What are you saying? That jockey who rides for you is as crooked as the day is long, and there are more than a few outriders always looking to pick up a few extra dollars and not terribly concerned about what they have to do to earn it. You paid the jock and outrider to make the switch? Why would you do such a thing, Jody? I thought we were friends. I did it for poetic justice, Skeeter. But that was only part of the reason, actually. I don't understand. The other part was to get revenge. Plain. Rodeo, you tried to murder Jody's husband, or have you forgotten about that, Skeeter? Chet. Chet. Chet, what are you doing? Alive? I am alive, Skeeter. You, uh, aren't seeing any ghosts. But you... You burned up in that fire. You almost burned up in that fire, Skeeter. You gave me a pretty good rap on the head with that shovel I, uh, came to just before the flames engulfed the barn. Yeah, I, love. I'm lucky. I, in all the confusion, I managed to slip away. I was dazed, confused. I needed time to get my wits about me and figure out how to handle a situation. So I made my way to the old Harris Ranch to recover and think. One day when you were off at the track, Skeeter... Jed came here and told me everything. I never realized that you could be such a monster. Jody's first reaction was to have me call the police and confess everything. I see. Well, she changed her mind, obviously. I'm sure she doesn't want her precious husband behind bars. Right? I don't condone what you and Jed did, Skeeter. Not for one minute. It's been so frustrating for Jed and myself knowing you deserve to be punished, yet being helpless to do anything about it. If you had an ounce of guts, Jed, none of this would have happened. It wasn't until Jody told me about your buying that racehorse that I finally hit upon a fitting way to uh, even the score. Pulling that switcher over the track was your idea. Huh? Well, figures. All right. It appears as if you two have painted old Skeeter into a tight little corner. You're getting off easy, considering... 
somehow the idea of getting hung out to dry all by my lonesome doesn't please me. What's to prevent me from walking into that commission hearing in the morning and telling them that Jed Tracy isn't quite as dead as everybody thinks? Uh, do that, Skeeter. The facts about the first fraud are bound to come out. People might begin to think that the barn burning wasn't an accident after all. So Skeeter Winslow takes a fall and Jed and Jody live happily ever after. Is that it? No. If I reappeared in this town, it would cause more problems than it would solve. Jed and I are going to move away. Start over where no one knows us. Yeah. You'll be able to start over in the lap of luxury, thanks to that nice little bundle of dough I helped you win on that race that we fixed. We'll be making our new beginning from scratch, Skeeter. If that money has blood all over it. We wouldn't feel right about spending a cent of it. Jed will be making full restitution. Well, how do you give a refund from the grave? In a couple of days, the Horseman's Benevolent Association is going to receive a rather healthy donation sent in anonymously. You've got to be kidding me. Hopefully, the money will do enough good to erase the way it was gotten. Well, I suppose you can afford to be a bleeding heart. The insurance money you'll collect from the bond going up will keep you solvent for a while. There won't be any check from the insurance company, Skeeter. I thought they were all set to pay off. They were. But they'll change their mind when I tell them that I started the fire. Well, why would you tell them a thing like that? Because Jody and I refuse to profit from this mess in any way, Skeeter. Hey, people go to jail for us and... Not when they knock over a lamp and start a fire unintentionally. Jody went into shock, thinking I died in the fire. So it took her this long to come forward with the facts. Skeeter... You get off my property. I don't ever want to see you again. You're not going to get away with this. We already have, Peter. If I've got to pay, so do you, Jed. And you too, Jody. Mention our names to the authorities, and you'll only be making things worse for yourself. I'm not going to speak ill of the dead. Because that's just what you're going to be. I am in no mood to listen to your threats, Peter. Everyone thinks you went to your just reward in that fire. I got nothing to lose by finishing the job now. I mean, how can you murder a dead man? The only way you'll get away with it is by killing me as well. Over your dead body? That can be arranged real easy. I don't know what you're thinking, Skeeter, but you are never going to get away with it. I will, believe me. Everybody knows how upset poor Jody's been since you went up a smoke with that barn. It's not unusual for a despondent widow to do something drastic. So when someone comes in here and finds Jody swinging from the rafters... They'll think she couldn't live without a beloved husband anymore and just committed suicide. Jed, he's going for that pitchfork. Don't try it, Skeeter. This time there's something more substantial than a telephone in my hand. Put down that rake. If you think you can fight me off with that puny stick, I've got another thing coming. Jed, be careful. You You. <laughs> hey, this is kind of fun, Jed. Drooling with sticks. Just like one of those Robin Hood movies, eh? Go, let's see you back here into that floor. I don't seem to have much choice in the matter. What's behind me? Yeah. You're yelling. You're comfortable around people. Yet he goes a little crazy when anyone gets near him. Maybe I should push you into that store, Jed. You'd rather be stumped than dead, that is. Jed, look out. Jed! <laughs> Hospital rules. You can stay only a few minutes. The patient is still very weak. Wow. Look who's here. I never expected you to visit me. How are you, Skeeter? I wouldn't be lying in this hospital bed if I was a picture of health, would I? The uh, doctor explained the extent of your injury. I'm sorry. Boy, you were real lucky to spin me around just as that horse decided to get mean. Mm -hmm. Had I made that move a second later, he would have kicked me square in the back instead of you. A crushed vertebrae of a heel. Did you know that? Yeah. I still have trouble believing it, but the doc says I'll never walk again. <laughs> Don't that beat all. <laughs> hey, uh, how come you and Jody aren't miles from here starting that? new life of yours. Now, that plan went out the window when we saw you lying on the floor of that stable all bent and broken. We called for an ambulance and waited for them to arrive. After what I tried to do to you, you couldn't leave me there to die? Oh, well, you really are a fool. I, uh, I've gone to the racing commission. Oh, yeah? I'll bet they weren't so pleased to hear what you had to say. They handed the deposition I gave them over to the district attorney. Formal charges should be made in a day or so. 
It's fixing a horse race all we'll be charged with. I had to tell him about the fire, Skeeter. I wasn't about to let Jody lie for us. Yeah. I suppose they know all about uh, that one-sided fight we had with that shovel, too, huh? No. No, they don't know anything about that, Skeeter. I decided not to tell them. But I tried to kill you. Yeah. What could I possibly gain? Revenge? Isn't that what you wanted all along? Looking at you now, that seems very unimportant. Skeeter, you've already been given a harsher punishment than any judge could hand out. Jed and Skeeter were convicted on grounds of complicity to commit fraud and arson. It's funny how things work out. When Jed and Skeeter first joined forces, they vowed to leave their mark on racing. They made good on that promise. The tears that fell from Jody Travis's eyes as the men were led from the courtroom are testimony to that. I shall return shortly. with barred doors which open at the crack of dawn. The day is spent under a watchful eye. There are periods set aside for rest and relaxation. At day's end, the doors swing shut and are secure. If the location of such activities is stable, this could be the daily routine of any number of racehorses. If the place is a prison, it could be the regimen followed by Jed and Skeeter. Either way, there's a bitter irony to the similarity, don't you think? Our cast included Russell Horton, Patricia Elliott, Ralph Bell, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. My name is Louise Croswell. How do you do? Mrs. John Croswell. And now you've just spoiled it. I know, we've never met. But finally, that deficiency has been remedied. As I said, my husband's name is John Croswell. Why are you telling me this? Do you know him? No. Have you ever heard of him? I have not. Then, uh, I'm I'm not quite sure. You're not quite sure of what? Of how I should phrase my next question. Well, why not... Put out a few nouns and verbs and see how they fall into place. We have established that you don't know my husband. Right. You never even heard of him. Correct. You have no objection to the work he does? True. Then, Professor Tolliver, why do you want to kill him? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by White Westinghouse Appliance Company. This is Tammy Grimes. Inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams. Friend in need, or the friend that you need, who can help you through the trouble. 